We're going to get started. Um, thank you. It's nothing like getting to an office in New York City, right? When you're oh yeah, no, be, be over in Brooklyn. I've, I've been here, you know, all morning. I didn't just get in and miss the train. It's fine. No, it's totally fine. I'm very relaxed. Well, you are. Uh, <laughs> we're thrilled to have you here. So we're going to jump right in. Um, you know, how has the WNBA? evolved over the years and really informing the landscape and allowing the runway for for the growth that we're seeing in women's sports yeah first of all thank you to brand innovators for having me here and FanDuel for hosting and shout out to the WNBA team in the audience um yeah so first off you know the WNBA really sits at the intersection of sport culture lifestyle and so through that lens we're really able to amplify our messaging so we have fans that are diehard basketball fans that love the sport and have been following us since day one. And then we have fans who are into the, the fashion and the lifestyle and the cultural relevancy that the WNBA provides. And then lastly, we have our purpose-driven fans. As you know, the WNBA has always stood for empowering women and underrepresented groups. And those fans continue to be the driving force behind why we do what we do to make global change. What would you pinpoint as the biggest difference today from the WNBA that I grew up with. Yeah, so a few things. One, we're seeing this confluence of positive elements coming together at once. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, it's the game on the court. The game has never been stronger. This past season at the WNBA, we saw more triple doubles than ever before. Um, and then we saw the NCAA. So the second part of that is generational talent. Everyone from Caitlin Clark to Angel Reese, Camilla Cardoza, Rakia Jackson, Cameron Brink, the list goes on and on. And a big part of that is they exist in a post Title IX environment, and they also grew up with the WNBA. Unlike us who weren't watching it when we were three and four, they grew up watching the W. So you have this amazing talent on the court, you have this generational talent coming up, and then that gives us the ability to have rivalries. And I think that's a really important aspect of any professional sport is knowing who to root for, who are the good guys, the bad guys. And we saw that form with our super teams in Las Vegas and New York. And when that comes together, we are not only seeing just fans of women's sports, but actually general sports fans taking a real interest in the WNBA. What I think is fascinating is you mentioned Caitlin Clark. The young fan, the tiny fans. I played basketball in college. My kids couldn't care less. They couldn't care less. I'm begging them to get into basketball. Caitlin Clark does what she does. My 10 year old and my eight year old are out there shooting hoops. Yeah. And I am begging them all this time. And my daughter begs me to buy her a Caitlin Clark jersey. And it is because of this new movement and the attention, of course, social media presence and all that stuff. But it is fascinating to see where this groundswell is now going to take us. Yeah. I think I saw a social post the other day where some little boy was taking a shot. Um, taking a three-pointer and said, Caitlin Clark, instead of saying Steph Curry. So I got to love that. Um, but I also think it's, if you can see it, you can be it. So these girls and boys have role models that look like them and feel like them. And, you know, our league is 80% women of color and we represent many LGBTQA plus members. And so being able to be so diverse and speak to so many different groups has allowed us to really excel. Uh, I love that. It gives me chills. Uh, how does the WNBA really lean on partners, sponsorships to get through challenging times and continue to fuel the growth of women's sports? Yeah. So, you know, we would not be here where we are today if it wasn't for our corporate partners and our media partners. It's an entire ecosystem that needs to work together to lift the sport. We developed something called our Changemakers platform in 2020, and it's a really unique two-way partnership in which it's a collective of like-minded purpose-driven organizations, Deloitte, AT&T, Nike, US Bank, Google, and and CarMax, yes. Um, thank you to the team. Again, it's early morning for me. Um, have all come together and we work, we work, you know, it's it's not just about investing in the league, but it's investing in, in our transformation so that we can help support and empower women and underrepresented groups at large. So this year we're actually standing up something with Voice in Sport, which is a digital mentorship platform aimed at keeping girls in sport and developing diverse leaders. So I think, you know, we need to continue to see that investment from corporate partners and media partners in order to continue to grow. Let's talk about the storytelling. We just mentioned Caitlin Clark. We mentioned these young kids out there. 
How is the WNBA leaning into that storytelling to really inform and bring along the future generations? So I think you mentioned it before, social is so important here. And with Nil, what we're seeing now is these amazing athletes are bringing their followership to the WNBA. They have fans that have been with them for years at the collegiate level, and now they're able to bring those to the W where we can then amplify it. Um, and I think by being authentic, intentional about their endorsements and about their partnerships, um, it just goes farther and it works harder. Talking about that, Brandon's going to be up here around 3.30 to talk more about NIL. We were talking quarterback right here in Western oh, yeah. Connecticut. So looking forward to Brandon's conversation a little later today. Can you discuss any particular campaigns or partnerships that have really helped leverage the WNBA in this space? Yeah, so when I think about back to those change makers, each one of them has a unique platform. Um, so we all come together to do collective work, but individually the work they do helps advance the league. So someone like CarMax. They're dedicated to telling the stories of the untold stories of our players. So yes, you may have heard of Asia Wilson, but have you heard the true story of Benajah Laney or one of our lesser known players? And so that's where CarMax is really leaning in. Then you have Google, who's all about media visibility. So they're making sure that our playoffs are all on nationally broadcast channels. Um, they also, another thing that all of our changemakers have really leaned on is utilizing our athletes in their campaigns. So I don't know who's watching the NBA finals. I'm sure everybody in this room is watching the playoffs. Um, but in all of the ad spots, you're actually seeing WNBA players. And it's amazing. Everyone from retired players like Sue Bird and Candace, who's soon to retire, but also our top athletes right now, like Brianna Stewart and, and um, Sabrina Ionescu are starring in the spots. That works really hard. We need to be able to constantly, you know, fuel this narrative around what we're doing at the W and our partners are helping us do that. Um, everyone from US Bank who is transforming the league by instituting financial education platforms because our athletes are actually a microcosm of women in the workforce. When we recognize that our players are only playing for four to five years, and that's really the average tenure of a professional athlete, what are they going to do after? And so we have to make sure when they're coming off the court in their late 20s, early 30s, we're helping to enable them to have a career post on court, whether that looks like hosting with Shanae, who's doing that on ESPN, um, who's still playing, um, or starting a new business like Jewel Lloyd, who actually has franchises starting up. Um, so each one takes a really unique approach. I think overall, it's about lifting the WNBA, helping us with our transformation, which we've seen in the net in the last few years, and then catapulting our growth to the next level. Really amplifying those positive role models and influences. That's going to go a very long way. Shanae is awesome, by the way. The um, what about some key priorities that the WNBA is really looking to to leverage and amplify? To use the word again, uh, to continue to impact the uh, the the culture, driving women's sports forward um, in an impactful way. Yeah. So um, a little bit of news leaked yesterday or the day before that you may have seen, but we are dedicated to enhancing the player experience. And the only way to do that is with our entire ecosystem. So we need corporate partners and media partners to step up. The league has decided to take on the ability to charter our players this year, which is something we've never had before. Um, that's what I've heard in the media. I don't know if something will be released today to you know, to, to, to solidify that. But um, so to that point, um, our next big media rights deal, that's, that's what's on the horizon. That will forever change the trajectory of this league. And what it does is it feeds into that cycle of allowing us to increase player salary, increase the player experience, and ultimately head toward parity. Now we know we are a for-profit business and it runs on a revenue model just like every other professional sports league. And so we're never going to see equity until we can see revenue streams that equal that of general sports. And another way we'll get there, and another thing I'm super excited about is expansion. So we announced just last year that we will be expanding into our 13th city, Golden State, um, which will soon be announcing their identity in the weeks to come. Um, and then we're actually looking to expand to two to three more cities by uh, the 2028 season. Fantastic. The timing is so, it, it is so wonderful for women's sports, the narrative surrounding women's sports in general, but particularly the, the WNBA. It is a pleasure to have you here, Coley. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us here at Brand Innovators. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everybody.